My guest today is Jeffrey Miller. Jeffrey, how are you? I'm doing great, David. How are you? I'm doing really well. It was so good to see you and to see everyone at Code Match a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen people in person. Yeah, it's a really great experience. I really enjoyed this year's Code Match. It was a good time. Yeah, I didn't speak this year, but you did. You gave a workshop on something that um, you were passionate about uh, called Building a Second Brain. And then you started talking to me about it. And I got so excited that I went out and I got the book. Oh, you bought the book. And, uh, well. Or the library. Public or... library. Got okay. The book. And, and I see that the book is, there's three sections in the book. And I've yeah. read section one. Okay. So that's, that's where I am now. So I still have a lot to learn, but I'm thinking maybe you can fill me in. Absolutely. On this whole concept. The book is by Tiago Forte. I, I, I assume I'm saying his name right. Yeah. And, um and uh, t tell me about it. what's uh, what is the whole principle behind building a second brain? Well, if you think about all the information that we have to wrangle in our daily lives, you know, information workers, knowledge workers as developers and as technologists, uh, anybody in a, a modern profession has a lot of information to deal with. Yeah. And it's really profession. hard to keep that all in your head. And in fact, you probably shouldn't do that. And building a second brain is all about using your digital ecosystem, the tools to support you in capturing that knowledge and managing that knowledge in a way that benefits you more uh, and more as you go. Okay. Um, and uh, what, tell me about uh, some of the principles behind how you can use these digital tools. Yeah. To so, brain. so if you think about it, you know, a lot of us have used tools like Evernote and OneNote Mm -hmm. uh, my personal uh, tool of choice at the moment is Notion. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's... Uh, I use OneNote myself. Yeah, yeah. So these principles are, are pretty portable. Uh, Tiago Forte talks about his uh, method, and the method that he prescribes, it, it, it's got an acronym called CODE. Mm -hmm. And this, the CODE stands for, the C is capture, O is for organize, D is for distill, and then E is for express. And what those represent are taking in the information, how you organize it in your personal system, how you break that knowledge down and work with it in, in ways that will help you in the future express it as creative works, uh, work products, those type things. So out of that, um, the capture phase is, is something that you probably are fairly versed in you know yeah, let's, got let's go through like, let's do it one at a time sure here. we'll start with capture and what do we yeah. mean when we say capture so capture i mean you've got sources um, of information coming from a lot of places you got email you're reading articles on the web me personally i love podcasts so i'm listening to things like dotnet rocks and hansel minutes uh some Te you know, technology and friends yeah technology <laughs> and friends exactly um so there's a lot of inputs that you can uh, find yourself interacting with, but unfortunately, uh, a lot of that just doesn't stick. You, you, you okay. experience in the moment, but then it just kind of evaporates. You like you, you have a good feeling for that moment, but then what used to you get out of it long term? So, capture looks at different ways to when you find some source of inf inspiration to uh, grab that and put it into your your digital system. Okay, so in my case, it's one. In your case, it's it's notion and, mm -hmm. and there it's there and that's kind of a brain dump it's all right, all right yeah. we got some information in there somehow now we need to organize it right yeah so for that. organizing uh capture the the main point is to just get it down you're not mm -hmm. you don't you don't want to put any friction in that at all now you're not hoarding now I've, I've done that in the past that's been my bad habit but I'm starting to, to say, you know, is this something that I can uh, really appreciate and benefit from? Hmm. So uh, once, you've, once you've taken that in, organizing is the next step. Uh, Tiago Forte talks about another acronym called PARA, and his big emphasis is on organizing for actionability. So hmm. your notes should serve you, not just sit there. And uh, PARA, the acronym, the P stands for project. Projects are, you know, they have a goal and they have an end date. 
So you're, you know, you're, you're you're doing things, you're accomplishing things. That's the the project that you're working on. So you you organize your notes by project. And next is A for areas or areas of responsibility. You may have heard that term from David Allen and getting things done. Oh, it's a great book. Yeah, I love that book. Um, and then the next is resources. Areas of responsibility have a certain quality standard that you want to keep, like health and wellness or finances. And they don't have an end date. They're ongoing. Resources are more informational. You know, you might have some hobbies or you might have some reference topics that you want to keep. Mm-hmm. And then the final A in para is archives. And that's just everything that you've collected, but you don't want in your face. It's not really serving you that immediate purpose, but you don't want to lose it. I see. So these are four categories. When you start to organize them, you want to say, is yeah. this an active project? Is it uh, a resource that I might use in the future? Or is it an archive that I used to use and I'm done with? Um, right. And I've already forgotten what areas was, but <laughs> the uh, areas of responsibility. responsibility. It's a Thank quality you. standard. So oh, interesting. We, so it could happen. It, what if uh, some of these things could fall in multiple categories? It's possible, and uh, the way I think of it is, projects usually stem from areas. Got it. Like career growth um, is is kind of an area for me. So I want to do specific things and accomplish certain skill building. So. When I learn a new skill, I make a project out of that. Yeah. Um, we did some uh, practice exercises at uh, the workshop at CodeMash, and uh, I'll give you a couple examples here. Like throw a birthday party. What do you think that is? Project, area, resource, or archive? That sounds like a project to me. Sounds like a project. Now this one, this next one's a little tricky. CodeMash, project, area, resource. Uh, am I an organizer of CodeMash, or am I just an attendee of CodeMash, or what? That's the question, right? So if you're, it, it depends. So if I'm speaking at CodeMash, that might be a project for me. You know, if it's just I went and I got some information, then that could be a resource. So depending mm-hmm. on your perspective, it could fall in, you know, one or another. Um, my my personal favorite was best dad jokes of all time. Oh, where does that fall? That sounds like a, a uh, resource the, for me. The, the big joke there <laughs> is that it's probably an archive. So. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, para, para is a pretty generic way of organizing things. Um, you can actually, and I've done this, uh, you can apply it in things like OneDrive, Google Drive. So if you start looking at the information that you've gathered in a frame of mind of like, what purpose is this serving? Is it an ongoing quality standard that I'm trying to maintain? Is it just informational? Or does it support an, an initiative with a specific target date? Hmm. And so I started going back through my OneDrive. I'm like, oh, wow, you know, I've got just kind of a hodgepodge of files and media, those type things. And so I've been gradually implementing this structure uh, in in Outlook, in OneNote. Um, And and fortunately or unfortunately, I use all the tools that I mentioned. I've got OneNote at work. I've got an Evernote account from the last 10 years that I've been maintaining and now Notion, but I'm starting to converge somewhat on just the one solution. Um, yeah. But sometimes you can't. Sometimes you have to uh, standardize across the board and use the tools that you have together. And that's really uh, one of the main points of a second brain is it's not just a single app. Mm. Now, there is the, the notes application that is kind of the hub of the the thought that you're doing and the information that you're gathering, but it kind of spreads around multiple platforms depending on what your circumstances are got it all right so the the tools can help you organize certainly things like OneNote and uh, outlook has some folders you can save in uh but uh what about distilling that sounds like a, there's some work on my part to do that yeah distilling is pretty fascinating um tiago forte introduces a, a concept called progressive summarization and the idea is that you don't uh knock yourself out all at one shot, um, trying to write a thesis about something, some web page that you read. And you're also doing yourself a f- future favor by each time that you interact with that uh, information, you're distilling it more and more down to the basics. So uh, the first time you're in there, you're just reading it. You know, Let's say you've got a, a blog article that you've captured on an interesting topic or an area that you're maintaining. The first thing you do is you read it, and it might be 10 minutes worth of content. 
And uh, so what you do is you go through, you just kind of look for what stands out. And as you do that, you bold it. Right. So that it doesn't have to be profound. You're just like, oh, that's good, that's good. But the next time you go back into that article, you're not going to read the whole thing. All you're going to do is skim over the bold areas and whatever stands out within just the bold areas, you're going to highlight. Oh, I see. So you're okay. reducing every time and not everything in your system is going to get this treatment. It's really the things that really energize you and are more activating and relevant that get the further stages of development. Makes sense. Those are the ones you're most likely to revisit. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and there are things that are kind of uh, engaging. Uh, the next level after highlighting is to uh, summarize it. So you, you make your own notes in there, just kind of at, at the top or something. Mm -hmm. okay. um, you know, what's the, the nuts and bolts of it? And so, so each time you're going back and you're, you're kind of kicking it to your future self and saving them time, saving yourself time, because when you're ready to produce something from that information, it takes very little time at that point to get the essence of it and start to piece it together. Got it. All right, and we've got one more uh, thing left in this <laughs> acronym, EXPRESS. Yeah, EXPRESS. Well, that's when you uh, begin to do what knowledge workers do and produce some kind of knowledge output. It could be uh, public speaking, it could be a paper, it could be um, you know, a documentation or whatever that is, but it basically pulls together from the work that you've done up to that point, the distillation, the organizing, the collecting, all of that feeds into a, a pool of resources that you can then draw upon. Uh, Tiago mentions a term he calls intermediate packets, and that's basically... Um, it's pieces of work that then you can build together like Legos. So, you know, he tries to, his goal is to not start any project that he isn't already 80% done with based on his prior work. Hmm, interesting. So, so, so prior, work packets, might, prior, yeah. prior work might, might fall into a resource or areas and that has to get to a certain uh, critical mass before it actually becomes a project. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, uh, critical mass is a good term. Uh, he talks about uh, something, he says, slow burns. So you can have a lot of little uh, projects kind of simmering in the background, and and that allows you to not get super burnt out about it, uh, not to make too many burn puns, but um, but basically you're you're sitting on a lot of um, uh, wealth that you've you've built you've invested in it it's it's compounding it's paying you interest back from the work that you've done in it okay yeah so though as i i've as I said i'm only about a 25 percent through this book but um as i read through it i start to think you know of course this this makes sense it sort of seems intuitive to me at least at a broad stroke we should we should be recording what we're thinking we shouldn't record everything we should organize it um and I'm, I'm guessing you, a lot of that you felt the same way, but are there anything that like was revolutionary that really stood out and something that you hadn't thought of before? Yeah, there were a few things. Uh, like I said, the progressive summarization was a, a big uh, eye-opener to me. But uh, he's got something else he calls the archipelago of ideas. And an oh, archipelago I haven't got to that is, part yet. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not too much of a spoiler, but uh, <laughs> it's a group of islands. And that if you think of them as like dots on a map, you can reach into your second brain uh, knowledge base and you can start to pull different elements together. Let, let's say you're writing a blog article or something and you have some idea where you want to take this. Well, you start with your own knowledge base. One big thing that he says is when you're getting ready to express, don't go to Google. At that point, you should be cutting out distractions. He talks about divergence and convergence. Hmm. And, and using your knowledge. And so uh, don't go to Google when it's time to write the paper or the blog article. You should be pulling from information you've already distilled and collected and then use those building blocks. So this archipelago of ideas does two things. It identifies the dots, you know, the, the elements that you want to piece together. And then the next thing is you sequence them. So one thing that he pointed out that kind of stood out to me was there are two different modes of thinking. First is selection, 
and the second is sequencing. And it's really hard to do those at the same time. So when you're picking out content from your knowledge base, that's selection. But mm -hmm. when you're starting to piece them together and put a flow to it, that's sequencing. Hmm. So I realized that I have a hard time juggling those two. And he recommends like doing two different passes on those activities. So when you're starting to build something, you pull things together, those intermediate packets or those core concepts in your knowledge base. And then when you're ready to produce the finished product, then you're sequencing them together as a separate step. Interesting. This is really uh, analogous to what you mentioned before about let's remove the friction. Let's when we're recording these, you know, where we're uh, capturing information. Don't worry about the the structure, the spelling, the just get it down. Right. Come back later on and distill it and organize it. So same thing when, right. you're, when you're creating. Make it two steps. One frictionless, <laughs> just a bunch of the main points. Later on, organize it and sequence them correctly. And yeah, I maybe, think my biggest fix the grammar and the spelling. Absolutely, my biggest problem is the convergence half of it. And he basically draws the line between organize and distill. So uh, capture and organize are, are very divergent things. You're, you're collecting, you're, mm. you're imagining. And then when you start to distill, you're reducing it and then mm. express your converging even more to produce that final product. And so, you know, I, I have this tendency personally to go, oh, but w wait, we could do this or we could do that. And it's like, okay, switch modes. Not that it's easy to do, but... Uh, you're trying to converge on what that final goal is. Yeah, exactly. I, I do. Uh, I do a lot of blogging. Yeah. And I um, like. I, I think I follow some of these things here. Like for example, uh, a lot of the stuff that I blog about, other people have already written about it. So I'm not yeah. creating super original content. But uh, I'll give you an example. I write uh, when I read a book. I like to review that book and write my thoughts of it. And I do exactly what you described. I I avoid other people's reviews. First thing mm. I do is I either take, sometimes I take notes and sometimes I just go from my, what's in my memory and I write my thoughts down and I compose them and then I'll go back later and look at reviews and say, oh, there's something that I missed. There's a, there's a thought that I, uh, I didn't notice or it was, uh, it, it's certainly worthwhile to incorporate that into mine. So I'm, I have to resist the urge to do that right away because otherwise I, I, I'm tempted to copy those ideas. I want the first set of ideas to be my own. Yeah, and then you don't want you don't want them to anchor for you. You know, you right, want to exactly. have your own thinking on it. Yeah. Yeah. Another concept that I found pretty uh, fascinating is something he calls a Hemingway bridge. Hmm. Ernest Hemingway uh, would get in these writing sessions, and he wouldn't quit until he knew what the next plot point was going to be in the story. Oh. And he'd leave himself notes to that end to say, okay, next time when I pick up, I'm going to start with where I was headed. So he, he's basically doing himself a favor and keeping that momentum going. And this Hemingway bridge idea is that you're building between these, uh, these sets of ideas, you know, e either over time or just how they relate together and helping connect the dots that way. So, uh, I found those few things, um, you know, kind of almost Tiago Forte trademarks, you know, him, him coining these terms. And then, then I, I, saw those as, as really good insights. It sounds like you've actually incorporated a lot of this into your life. I'm trying to. Uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a you know, snap of the fingers. And uh, another thing that he talks about is, is that this is not you know, just a one-time event. This is a, a start of habits and, and a way of thinking about your information. And it's you know, it's not just one perfect system, and it's not something you, you just do overnight. It's a, yeah. it's a process and a, and a habit to it. Okay. Well, how do you get started? So there's a lot of people watching this that think this is a good idea. What's step one? Well, I do recommend the book. I think uh, you showed your copy. Uh, yeah, my I have the background on, so it's hard to read. I have to get it right in the right focal length. <laughs> but it is called Building a Second Brain. Building a Second Brain by, by Tiago Forte. Tiago Forte, Forte, and I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Yeah. Um, so it's really fascinating. Um, I usually, when I find a book I like, I buy it in three formats, Kindle, Audible, and printed books, so I can really uh, immerse myself in it. And this is one of those uh, books that I've done that with. Hmm. 
Um, Tiago has a, a website called buildingasecondbrain.com, and I first discovered his work uh, around March of last year, and he held he convened a virtual conference called the Second Brain Summit. And if you search on the second, you know, Second Brain Summit or go to uh, buildingasecondbrain.com, there should be uh, a link to that. And it was he pulled together people from a lot of different tool specialties, a lot of YouTubers. Uh, some people used graph-based note systems like Obsidian. Um, other people used Notion and OneNote. Um, so he had different experts that were really focused on their tool and it was like an, each one had an hour slot and got to talk about their particular niche and their specialty so that that was a really good overview and I watched maybe half a dozen of the sessions out of mm. 20 or so and they were really helpful um, one of the things that really stood out in that is a service called Readwise so Readwise uh, a one of the main things that it does is it, it can pull in your Kindle highlights and then prompt you with those highlights, uh, random selections every day, so that instead of reading a book and then forgetting about it or having it kind of fade away as a blur, right. you're basically able to remind yourself of these snippets. So it will send you an email every day with five by default. Um, I use the mobile app, and I'm, I think... Today, I think I'm up to 300 or 301 day streak of reviewing these highlights. And um, so, five and it, quotes from five different books that you've read. In the yeah. Episode. So, if you've got Kindle books um, and you use the highlighting feature, yeah, it can pull those in, and then and then uh, it it also can push them to other applications like Evernote hmm. and Notion. So, so I've got this this workflow integrated so that when I'm reading my Kindle books now, I, I, I you know, really try to, to use the highlighter now because right. it, it's a good way to refresh my memory. And uh, you've probably heard of uh, spaced repetition as a learning technique where you try to uh, reinforce things at an interval with uh, reminders of what the topic is I see. so that it's not one and done. Right. Interesting. So you're using Notion and you're using Readwise. Are there any other tools that you're using? There is one other one that I would like to mention, and that's called Snipped. It's S-N-I-P-D. It's a podcast service, pod, podcatcher app. And I've used different ones over the years, but I've always wanted the ability to, in that moment when I hear the speaker saying something really profound, I'm like, oh, that's really good. I want to put a bookmark right there at that moment in time. Mm -hmm. And Snipped will allow you to do that. It has some AI features where um, it, it'll take a clip from a little bit before that moment mm -hmm. and a little bit after that, right. and it will transcribe it, and it also integrates nice. into uh, ReadWise and Notion. And um, then, then it'll put in your notes a link back to that clip. So, hmm. you know, I would always star the episode and maybe send the whole episode to a friend and and maybe say, oh, it's at minute 32 or something, but a lot of this is a lot more that. comprehensive. And it, and all I have to do is on my Beats earbuds, I hit it three times. It's the rewind. Oh, I like that. So you can do... And it goes uh, ding. And you then do it while you're driving. That's important. That's when I was... Yeah, and, it, and while I'm up. driving, if I'm on Apple CarPlay, I just hit my my back button on the steering wheel to mm. capture that moment. It's, it's fantastic. So nice. totally free. Um... Readwise is a paid service, and the notion that I use is, is a, a free account level. So, so those are my main tools right now. I'm still using Evernote as kind of a historical archive, and it's it's one of the few tools that I can access from, you know, my client assignment. You know, some of those things are blocked. I can't use Notion at work, but hmm. you know, you use the tools that you have and. Right. Um, very cool. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? I, I know your your workshop is a half a day, so. <laughs> but is there yeah. any key that we've missed? Well, um, I think we've covered the main points. I do uh, find this topic fascinating. I, I've been interested in personal knowledge management since the beginning of my career. Uh, I was an intern at a company writing COBOL on a Unix system, and I was the afternoon guy 
and uh, one of my friends was working mornings at that same company, and when I'd go ask a question, he, my manager would say, man, I just answered this question for morning guy. And I'm like, well, if you'd write it down somewhere, I could look there first <laughs> and not bug you about it, you know. So it's that, uh, you know, capturing information, that kind of thing. So it's, it's, really, it's really exciting to me when I can share information that I've learned with someone else and then watch their eyes light up and them get excited about the topic. Well, I appreciate you sharing information with me and with my viewers. Thank you so yeah. much. I've, I've learned a lot today. I would, I would like to uh, put in a shameless plug for, uh, I'm also a children's author. Oh, please. Uh, this is Skeeters. Okay. It's a book about mosquitoes. It's a gang of mosquitoes fighting Wendell for control of the backyard. <laughs> and don't I'm spoil an, it for us. I don't want to know who wins until well, I read the book. I, I won't tell you. I think you could probably guess. But um, uh, we, we did a Kickstarter when we were adopting our son. And uh, we decided it was a poem that I wrote many years ago. My, my wife, um, uh, who I met on eHarmony, happy customer, if I'm going to put in another no, no, no compensation there. Um, when when I read her that poem, she's like, "That's got to be a children's book." And so we finally put it together. Uh, you know, Chris Judd from Manifest yeah. Solutions. That's where I work. Um, he also did a children's book. And when I found out about it, I learned who his illustrator was, and that's who we used as well. So, really great artwork. Excellent. Hey, send me a yeah. link to that, and I will put that in the show notes. I'll as do well. that. I'll do that. Skeeterbooks.com. And uh, part of the proceeds we put to help other people with their adoptions as well. So um, it's been a it's been a fun journey, and I'm a proud dad. So awesome! So this is you know I, you know I have literally tens of viewers. So you may have an email pour in. Well, so far I've got nine five star reviews on Amazon. So Excellent. and and maybe two of them are like verified purchase. I got all my friends to go <laughs> on there and do their thing. So, um, but found one one father that said hey this is our daughter's first book she she can't awesome. read it but she loves the pictures so awesome. it's, it's kind of heartwarming there so all right well thank you very much and you stay yeah. safe all right thank you david Social media and communications technologies have made it possible to form friendships in brand new ways. You can become friends with someone from around the world and never re meet them in real life. And whether they're shallow or deep, these friendships can be very real and very meaningful. Treasure them, nurture them, and celebrate them. They can add great new dimensions to our lives. Let's make friends. <laughs>